Um, so this meeting meeting is on behalf of the Skills 360 board. Skills 360 board is Coast Capitals Skills Board or its Skills Advisory Panel, as, as government calls Skills Boards, and we um, provide leadership on um, behalf of the, the area and on behalf of partners on in the world of employment and skills. It's a business-led board, so we've got a significant, it's, it's most definitely um, business heavy, um, and those businesses, along with other partners from local authority education, um, have helped us to establish a board we set up in January 2019, and we've done a significant amount of research into the area and into its economy and into the um, sort of opportunities and challenges around the labour market and skills. All of that was, was interrupted as, uh, as the COVID pandemic set in, um, but we've taken, we've, we've, we've kind of worked through that and, and are currently monitoring and tracking what that means to the area. And in September last year, we launched our skills strategy and action plan. And we're really pleased to have Simon, Bland and Anna Christie with us today as well, who are also on the Skills360 board. Anna's a, Anna's a new, new recruit from the Chamber of Commerce in Sussex and Simon is from Rye Get Advanced Borough Council. So to help us deliver our action plan and also to really encourage collaborative um, action and, um, and collaborative working, we've um, established board champions. And I mentioned that Tim and Leanne are our board champions for construction. So we've got, you know, some really interesting businesses on the board, senior level representation and significant amounts of expertise and knowledge from those sectors. Um, Leanne uh, works for a, um, I'm going to get this wrong now, aren't I? It's Thaken Homes. So uh, <laughs> Leanne, tell us, tell us what Thaken Homes does. Uh, so we've got different strands to our business. So we're a property developer, we build for ourselves, we're a strategic land promoter, um, and we also build for housing associations or local government. Thanks, Leanne. Far better than if I'd said it. And Tim? <laughs> Put you on the always, spot. Always good to come off mute as well before I start. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a senior director with uh, Arcadis. We're a design engineering and uh, program product management uh, consultancy uh, based in the UK, but also uh, worldwide as well. Uh, Dutch owned and we've got about uh, 27,000 people worldwide. Um, and my particular field is aviation, which is obviously a, a quieter industry at the moment. Thanks, Tim. So we're, we were really keen to, to sort of dive deeper into some of the key sectors for the coastal capital area. And, and thinking about COVID, we, we were really, really interested in, in construction and what opportunities construction, um, the construction sector might offer to residents of Coast Capital moving into the future now in terms of, you know, sort of maybe changing careers, changing jobs, um, and what opportunities there are, but they're into the future and thinking about the world of work in the future and what, where that's going for construction and what opportunity there might be for, for the residents of, of Coast Capital. Um, and Tim and Leanne put together a bit of a bit of a spotlight for the board and they're going to share that with you today just from their perspective. Um, and then what we what we really want to do, the, the, the perspective of the Skills360 board is how can we work with you as as kind of skills providers, people in the world of, of the supply side of skills. Um, and then we want to use our networks, use Tim and Leanne's networks and our other board members' networks to, to bring together a, a, a kind of coalition of the willing of employers to support us, to work with you, to help you, not to duplicate what you're doing, not to do it for you, but just really to kind of support you in, 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 in getting the best for yourselves, for your students, and in terms of engaging with employers. So that's what, what this is all about, is talking to you today about sort of what the, the opportunities and challenges are that you're facing and then how might we work with you and use the expertise of our board members to support you. So as well as being our construction champion, Tim is also our equalities, diversity and inclusion champion. And um, we're really pleased that he's introduced a, a new concept to us of inclusion moments. And um, every, every meeting 
that we have with Tim and we're, we're embedding this within Coastal Capital as well. We have an inclusion moment to help us to put ourselves in, 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 the, in the frame of mind of, of thinking about how we can, the work we're doing is there for everybody and that we're considering our diverse uh, learners, our diverse businesses, and that we're as inclusive as possible. So before we start, we'd just like to share a fairly short um, video clip with you. Just, it's not, it's not really, um, you know, for, for, for discussion, it's just to put ourselves in the right frame of mind before we start. So I'm gonna pass over to Jake, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, I will now seamlessly play the video. If anybody <laughs> has any trouble viewing it, we'll, we'll circulate it after the meeting as well. It sounds okay. Are you seriously considering her as a I just candidate? Don't trust don't trust She's a woman. She's a woman. This is a man's job. She's clearly not educated. Really? Does she even speak English? That's not me. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. You call it an honest mistake. Science calls it a blind spot. Our unconscious mind is a mysterious and powerful thing. It makes 90% of our decisions without us even knowing it. Our brains are overloaded with 11 million pieces of information every second. Yet we can only process about 40 of them. So we're wired to make cognitive shortcuts using past experiences to make assumptions. And you know what happens when we assume. Our unconscious mind can put us on autopilot, determining where we sit, who we eat lunch with, who we turn to for advice, and who we choose to offer a helping hand. Living our lives with blind spots can put us in a tunnel. Same point of view, same decisions, same outcomes. We can find ourselves trapped in the land of snap judgments and misconceptions. We've all been on both the giving and receiving end of blind spots. Think about it. Who's talented? Who's able? Who can I trust? Longs. We've all been there. Blind spots are part of the human condition. Our choices have consequences for us and the people we interact with. By accepting that blind spots exist, we can stop. Imagine what possibilities exist if we could do it all over again. Different perspectives, inclusive relationships, diverse networks, better outcomes, seeing people for who they really are, people like you, with unlimited potential. We all have blind spots. Once you accept that you have them, you can choose to do something about it. It's time to check your blind spots and focus on what's possible. Thank you, Jake. And I hope that um, puts us Puts us in a place where we can we can be inclusive and uh, and 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 think about how we we focus our minds on on um, equality, diversity, and inclusion through the meeting. Um, I'm not feeling very inclusive because my cat just tried to jump up and uh, <laughs> in the middle of that. So <laughs> apologies. Um, so. I would like to hand over to Tim and Leanne now, and they are going to um, just introduce themselves and talk talk through um, their their thinking on the world of construction from their perspectives at the moment. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, so uh, while we're getting um, the slides coming up on the screen now, uh, thank you, Claire. So we did obviously introduce ourselves briefly. Um, I'm the HR director at Thacom. I've worked here for now for three years. Prior to that, I was in engineering. So construction to me is a, a kind of fairly new sector really. Um, but I've been involved with um, all aspects of our organization and also with some of our contractor, um, contractors and other organizations we work with. Um, I'll let Tim, um, introduce himself and then I'll move on with the presentation. Tim. Thank, thanks, Ian. I think uh, we're, we're definitely different ends of the scale on, on uh, in construction, which works really well together. Uh, yeah, I've, <coughs> well, I started in the, uh, in the well, 1977 as a QS in Chichester <coughs> many, many years ago. Uh, <coughs> and I've, I've had a passion for 
the construction industry uh, and uh, like m many um, youngsters of today it's that uh, role model that you find uh, in your life that helps you decide where where careers go etc and my, my godfather was a civil engineer so that that helped me uh, and um, I've just loved every day I've spent in the industry now um, it's, it's over 40 years and to be able to help as Leanne and I are doing the uh, not just the next generation coming through but people to retrain as well uh, and to look at construction industry in a different way uh, as a job, as a career, as something to, to really be part of, to build something uh, is very exciting. So with that, I'll uh, hand back to Leanne to get us kicked off. Thank you, Tim. Um, Claire, if we could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so we're going to talk um, a bit about today, just generally about the construction industry. Um, a bit about the the impact obviously we can't ignore that the pandemic and COVID's had on everything um what the opportunities are in um in the construction industry um i'm quite passionate about that coming into it as a new industry i found it really exciting so many opportunities i never understood or never knew about so we can just explain some of that to you um, and then we'll just run through about how we attract talent to the construction industry because it is a big problem to us and obviously we've got some time at the end for some more questions um so Claire, if you could move to the next slide, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna hand over um, to Tim and he's gonna talk through a bit about the construction and the impacts of COVID. Yeah, thanks Leanne. COVID has obviously had a, a, a massive impact on, on the construction industry at the start, particularly in terms of how uh, sites could be maintained, sites could, could continue to be open. But then on, on the other side, the impact is a, is a positive one in where the government has looked to put around 13 uh, billion pounds of spending into a plan for jobs, which has a direct impact on, on the construction industry. Uh, but that's not just about build, build, build. It's about how we do it better as well. And the industry is looking through, for example, the Construction Industry Council. How can we do this better? How can we bring new, new ideas, new thoughts into the industry? Um, Leanne and I have spoken often with, uh, with the Coastal Capital Skills team about um, how you can do off-site manufacture, how you can bring manufacturing skills into the construction industry, making it safer, uh, more efficient uh, and quicker to build in the, in the future. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so if we look at the, the, the current state of the industry, and this is something that Leanne and I looked at back in, in 2022, and, and we will be get, getting through and, and doing an update, but you see it, it, it had a big knock on effect in the industry to, to many, many projects at the start of the pandemic. Um, <clears throat> there was a combination of delayed starts to the project productivity uh, being low because of the, the, the safety requirements of COVID as we went through the understanding and, and, the, uh, 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 and the impact of, of how you can work safely on a, on a site. But really, when we now look at it in the latter end of 2020 and the start of 2021, the industry is recovering, it's recovering well. Um, people that have been out through the um, job retention scheme are now back in the industry. Yes, we've lost some workers um, that are because of Brexit, but actually productivity is now beginning to increase uh, and indications are that we are now getting to a point where big infrastructure projects are going to be uh, moving forward and, and the housing. So if we look beyond uh, the crisis and think about what we can do, we need more homes. That's that that's absolutely right. And, and you know, Leanne's a real advocate around how we can, we can get better at the, the housing side of it. Uh, we need the infrastructure as, as well. Um, some, somewhere around 80% um, of the uh, urban infrastructure areas and developments that we need in the next 10 years are still in the planning stage at the moment. So we really do need to get going. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so if we think about the impact of the industry with the, the amount of work that could come through uh, in the uh, in the future, and as, as we know, it is an industry that has lots of, of, of organizations and companies employed within, but it also has a lot of self-employed people as well, uh, particularly uh, tr within the trades uh, and, and one or two of the, um, the, the skills required to, to plan and develop uh, the, uh, uh, the skills needed to, to build 
the programs that we want in the future. We are beginning to see the green shoots coming back though. We are now beginning to see growth and big infrastructure projects like High Speed 2, like Lower Thames Crossing. If you look at Highways England and particularly in the coastal capital area, um, the, uh, the, the, the work that can be coming on to improve our network of, of roads, to improve our rail networks as well, and to bring employment back into to the area. Gatwick has been a, a big part of that for many years. That will come back as well. So we are seeing the green shoots begin to come through. Next slide, please. So where is that picture for, for, for us in, in coastal capital? Well, highways, rail, utilities, we have um, environment agency of Southern Water, as well as um, Southern Rail, uh, Govia and, uh, and, and Highways England working in our area. There is residential developments going on at a, at a pace within within the, within the region. Town regeneration is something that I know is very high on on uh, the LEPS agenda as well. Understanding how towns can regenerate and not last but not least, the environmental schemes to look at how we can build back greener, how we can build back more resilient, how we can get a, an understanding uh, of the carbon issues and challenges that we face. So as that recovery starts, we're looking at many different new skills and innovations come in and trying to attract people from all backgrounds, uh, from all cultures, uh, uh, and, and particularly looking at the gender balance within the industry as well, and thinking about that recovery and thinking about the digital solutions that can help speed up the planning process, embedding carbon reduction measures in housing and, and office developments, uh, putting that into targets for the development. The, <laughs> looking at the modern methods of construction, so off-site manufacture that can be done safely uh, in a controlled environment in a, in a factory, uh, similar to the, the way uh, we see cars and, uh, uh, and other uh, consumable goods being, being built, and identifying that pipeline of, of, of construction activities, which Leanne will touch on later in the region, so that we understand the skills need moving forward. Next slide, please. So I'll now hand back to Leanne, we'll start to, to look at what are the opportunities to employ people in our industry. Thank you, Tim. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm quite passionate and, and moving into the um, construction sector and, and getting an understanding of it over the past three years. I've been um, pleasantly surprised at the industry, the sector, what it's about, and so many exciting opportunities for people for their careers. I really didn't understand that. And I think that is a problem um, that the construction industry faces and I'll talk through a bit more about that but I think the there are lots of different opportunities for people across a whole range we're not just talking about somebody who wants to do a hands-on trade role we're, we're talking about people who are more desk based there, there literally feels like there is something for everyone so there is a lot of opportunity and as Tim just mentioned there's a lot of growth um, and we're seeing that growth starting to pick up um, if we could go to the next slide please Claire Thank you. So we put this slide together to try and help people understand the huge range of roles um, that are part of the construction industry today. Um, some of those, as we've said, are quite are easier to recruit for than others. Um, we have a real struggle recruiting enough people with the right skill sets into um, into our business, as do other other businesses in the area as well. Um, and that's because there just doesn't seem to be as many uh, people out there. There's so many opportunities. There's growth. There's there's apprenticeships, um, there's degree routes through graduates, there's lots of different opportunities here. So I think I, until I came into the industry, I didn't fully appreciate the whole range of skills that, um, that are involved with this. If we could go to the next slide, please. Thank you, Claire. Um, and we've then split the roles up there. So we're looking at those jobs that we've got today. Um, and I think sometimes this can be a bit surprising in that people will refer to the construction industry and may think of it as sort of a semi-skilled or a skilled trade sector. And actually you can see the highly skilled uh, individuals that we need within the business to make it work. And obviously we need people across all the different areas, but actually without those highly skilled individuals, we're not able to um, progress with any of the projects. Um, some of these are, um, are skilled through uh, degrees, through apprenticeships, or it could be through experience that they've gained. But a lot of those require quite a bit of significant um, further education, college, universities, those sorts of things to get to that. And, 
And I know from my own experience, it's really hard to find some of those individuals. They've got really strong career paths, really good remuneration and reward for the job that they're doing. And they get a lot of job satisfaction from that. You can go to the next slide, please. We also looked at the jobs of the future and tomorrow. So where we were talking about those roles that we've currently got, we've got huge skills gaps there anyway with finding those individuals. Um, and where we've got other sectors that are struggling, people have got those transferable skills and we can look at not only people coming up uh, through from schools now, but also who are those individuals who've got transferable skills that can potentially move into the construction sector. And then looking on into the future, there is going to be a whole different range of skills required from people. And I think the construction industry can um, can be described as it stayed the same way for a long time. There's been a lot. If you look at how we used to build things, we build things pretty much the same way. But there is now a real push to, to change that and to do something differently. Tim mentioned MMC and BIM and, and using manufacturing, there is a real push for us to do things better. Uh, to, and that's to do with sustainability, it's to do with um, the resources required. And, and there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of IT, there's a lot of really skilled um, requirements for us to be able to achieve that. We've done things in the same way for such a long time, but actually if we're going to do things more in the same way that automotive or other sectors have moved forwards with technology, we need some of those individuals. And also we have a huge task to um, retrofit the existing housing stock and existing um, buildings uh, to make sure they are hitting all the targets to do with uh, zero carbon and sustainability by the required um, required timeframes. So again, there is going to be, there is a huge need for those individuals in the future. Thank you, Claire. So one of the projects that we're, we're working on at the moment, so our, our spotlight onto the construction sector, we, we kind of quickly realised what we need to do is understand um, what that construction need is for skills and, and uh, individuals in the future. We, we kind of know what we struggle with recruiting now, but actually who are those people gonna, we, that we're going to need further on down the line? Because obviously people in schools and colleges, when they start to come through and into the workforce, those are the individuals that are gonna take us through the next five, 10 years time. And those are the skills we need to focus on and, uh, and be very proactive in considering what are the requirements. So we've, act, we've, we've started a, piece of research. Um, it's a huge piece of work. We've um, got an organisation who's working with us, we're meeting with regularly and we're having lots of input into. And this piece of research is looking at the major um, major programmes and projects that are planned in our the, in the coastal capital area to cover housing, commercial, um, transportation and utilities work and these are huge programs that are happening and we are undertaking that so that we can map out what what are the jobs that are required and how many of those individuals is it likely that we're going to need because we can then feed that back in to the work that we're doing to put that spotlight on the construction um, sector and also help with everyone's understanding about we're not talking about we need people in the next six months this is an ongoing thing this is the scale of the I guess the issue with regards to that workforce that we're going to need so that's happening at the moment and it will look at what we're going to need over that period of 10 years um, and we're obviously we we're keen to share that and use that so that when we're looking at um, training and resourcing and businesses in our area, this can all feed into that and it can help with giving us a big picture of what the construction sector workforce is going to be required for our for the area of the country. Thank you, Claire. Um, so there's lots of ways that we we do try and attract talent to the construction industry but I think it can be quite difficult and it can be a challenge there are as I've said there's there's lots of ways in through apprenticeships um, through different um, further education routes degrees but obviously lots um, there's people I have people within my business who are doing day release to college and lots of different opportunities that are available thank you Claire Um, so 
with regard to our role in um, as business, we need to make sure that we are doing the right thing, that we are pushing with the education. It's really no good for us to be kind of talking about we can't find the right people, we haven't got enough of the skilled workforce that we need to run our businesses. Um, but obviously it's a partnership. We need to work with education providers, with people in schools, with skills wars. We need to work together to try and solve this issue. It isn't just for one, um, one organisation or companies or, or education providers to solve. So I think it's really key that we do work together, that we put the right things in place, such as apprenticeships. Um, and I also think business has got a role to kind of um, throw away some of those views and those opinions and what people think of construction because I think there's a lot of myths around it um, and I hold my hands up and I admit I probably thought one thing of the sector until I moved into it once I moved into it I understood a lot more um, what it was about and actually it's an amazing place to work and it's an incredibly environment and I, I spend some time on site, I spend time in the office um, and I think we really need to get out there to sort of students, parents, um, teachers and, and people who want to transfer in from one industry to another to try and sell the industry to them. I do sometimes feel it's a bit of a closed industry that people can't get into and it's quite hard to understand what it's about. So I think there's a really uh, a big thing for business there to try and sell itself more about the opportunities it can provide. Um, and also about the technology and um, the new ways of working, um, the, the modern methods of construction with regards to manufacturing, BIM, those types of things. I think that that's, again, that's key to attracting people to our industry. Thank you, Claire. So that's the end of um, our presentation. Um, obviously, myself and Tim are happy to answer any questions that anybody may have. Thanks, Tim and Leanne. That's um, really, really, really helpful and really informative. And and I think you know you're you're preaching to the converted. You're in a room of um, you know of people from various different settings, but mainly from educational and sort of provider settings. And and I think it probably some of what you've said is 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 music to their ears in terms of a recognition from employers um, of, of of potential change needed and and the opportunities for providers to help really drive forward those changes um, in in the world of construction. I can I can see the the, the, the key role that they play there. So are there any questions at this point or any comments, reflections for, for Tim and Leanne? <laughs> I can see Dave's trying to speak, but we can't hear you. <laughs> That's a shame. Oh, Anna's got a hand up, Anna. Hi there. Thank you, Kirsten. It was more of a, um, a comment in terms of, as, as you know, um, Sussex Chamber has put in a bid for the local skills improvement plan. And one of the key sectors that were highlighted in terms of um, challenges is the construction industry. So it, it will be great moving forward in terms of how we can really expand on that research, that mapping work that you're doing, linking that in through the, the Skills360 board um, and really identifying what those key issues and challenges are so we, we can break it down further. So I really look forward to, to helping and working on that and reaching a wider employer audience as well, um, because construction is one of our um, largest sectors in terms of the chamber and um, there's great opportunities to really reach out to, to a greater and wider uh, construction audience as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Anna. Vicky. Can I, Kirsten, can I just respond? Yes, to, to Sorry. That, I know you've made a br brilliant point there. I think that ability for us to connect better and to understand how the industry works and, and what, what, what we have, I think we don't fully appreciate the skills uh, and, and the passion and the drive that individuals within the industry have to want to share. And to be able to bring that together and, and get people to work uh, with real synergy together, I think will reap its rewards uh, if we can uh, get the opportunity to work together. As you can just see, particularly from 
for me and the passion that for someone coming into the industry it, it is fantastic and if we can in, uh, in, engender and capture that and bottle it uh, I think we'll uh, do a great job. Thanks very much Tim. So <laughs> we still can't hear you Dave. <laughs> Maybe if you want to put some um, some comments in the uh, in the chat and we can we can draw them out that way. Um, not really sure what's going on with your end. Um, I might pass to Vicky and hopefully Vicky we can hear Vicky. Let's give it a go. Um, <laughs> Leanne, uh, interesting to hear you talk about the the huge skills gaps that you have and I, I think we hear a lot about the skills gaps in construction but I wonder if you're able to narrow that down at all and, and perhaps prioritize about where do you find the bigger skills gaps what are the what are the main priorities are there any of the yeah anything that we should really be trying to narrow in or focus on rather than this broad spectrum of construction Yes, I mean, from from my perspective, and I'm obviously only talking about recruiting from from my organisation, but there are certain um, certain uh, specific roles that are um, incredibly difficult to to fill. So civil engineering, um, engineering managers, um, town planners, I can't find anywhere. <laughs> They're extremely difficult to find and difficult to recruit. Um, and actually, in some of those um, some of those roles, some of the designers, some of the architects, um, we're actually bringing in more graduates because you actually can't find those individuals with experience and skills. So we're opening it up, and we are gradually bringing in more and more graduates because with our growth plans, we're going to have to grow them ourselves because those people are just not there now. Obviously, it won't just be us that are looking for those individuals and skill set. There will be other organisations, but I think with regard to people working on site, we have got a gap there. We have got problems with, with ground workers, with bricklayers, with all the trades on site, but there is also a huge number of back office roles that we do struggle to, to find those individuals. And really it seems that they're, they're not actually there um, in this part of the country, or there's a very limited number of those individuals with those skills. And can, can I just add a couple to that as well? Uh, Leanne, I spoke about it in the past, that quantity surveyors uh, are another one that uh, you know, I was told back in the 1980s that quantity surveyors would be an extinct um, uh, skill, but uh, we, we are still being required, it's still needed. And the, the other one is, is, is planners, and when I say planners, I mean those that look at a site, look at the construction, look at the drawings, understand how long it's going to take. Uh, to, to deliver, understand productivity particularly. It's not really recognised uh, uh, as, a, as a degree or a, uh, an apprenticeship skill. It's usually the project managers that, that specialise in that, but that is so key in being able to get um, uh, timelines understood. So yeah, QSs and planners, I'd add to that list. Yeah, I completely agree. We struggle with those as well. <laughs> Real. Can, can I can I kind of come back in that that's really really interesting to hear and that's um that's good we we for example are in our third year now of running the town planning degree apprenticeship uh, but interestingly the only people who've been sponsoring people through through that apprenticeship are all local authorities we've not seen that engagement from from individual employers such as yourself so uh, yeah maybe there is a there's a link here that yes. needs to be made in some way because that that's obviously there's a big crack in the middle where people are falling through and yeah thank you what well, sorry ultimate sin vicky what would you what would you want from an employer in terms of supporting a, a that town employer a town planner apprenticeship uh well i mean so obviously they need to employ a trainee, a trainee town planner. Um, it is a level seven apprenticeship. So most of the people that we have on that at the moment have either been working in planning offices or they've got, they've maybe they've done a geography degree or a related sort of degree. Um, and then they, 
they come to university one day, one day a week, and it's a two year apprenticeship to chartered town planning status. So yeah, it'd be interesting to have that kind of conversation with you because we've had the feeling that particularly, particularly big home building companies such as yourselves must be using those skills. But when we've we've sort of tried to reach out to one or two people, then it it didn't seem to didn't seem to land. Carols of uh, sharing and I'm just scribbling down some notes as well at the same time. So that's really, really interesting. And I think something that I want to just have as a takeaway there. Um, so thank mm. you. Um, before I come to Anna and then to Ian and reflect on Dave's comments in the notes, I just want to um, just to say we had an agenda because we wanted to just make sure that we had a conversation that flowed. Um, I'm more than happy to just keep the conversation flowing as i said what i want from this meeting is to it is for you to be able to engage in this conversation i don't want to you to feel oh we're, we're having these conversations everywhere it's actually tim and liana are here to to offer their support to to be able to take this away and think about how we can support you moving forward so what i want to get from this conversation is What's that added value? How can we help you? And what can we be doing that you're not already doing or to help you? So it seems the comment that Vicky, you just made around town planning, struggling to get his employers engaged. That's something that we can get engaged in potentially. And are there other things, similar things to that, that we might be able to. So just setting that out there, that if I don't follow the agenda, hopefully you're okay with that. <laughs> And I think we might just stick to one group rather than going to separate breakout rooms because we're a small enough group and we're we're happily engaging. And Dave's going to have to just throw his comments in um, through the chat because we can't hear him. Um, apologies. So, Anna. Thank you. Um, it's interesting that Leanne picked up on the um, skilled, highly skilled jobs that are in, um, in need. So that's what I've been hearing as well. Um, a lot of the construction companies are also um, facing challenges still as a result of the EU transition and Brexit in terms of filling some of the lower skilled um, positions and being able to fill them locally. And that is still a struggle. And um, so I, I feel there's still a need as well for the lower skilled jobs and how we're going to fill that. Um, the other issue is that the, the skills we're needs that you've identified are very much the now, but we need to look at how the construction industry is also going to adapt to dealing with net zero and the green sustainability environment and how they're going to adapt their processes, um, their methods, and how that will impact the future skills needs, um, how things are going to be automated and AI, how, how that's going to come about, but also the materials that are used um, and how the construction industry can also reduce the amount of waste because it is one of the biggest sectors in terms of um, creating the most waste in terms of plastic and materials and everything that are not recycled. So I, I think we also, there is a, a need to really understand what those future skills are going to be so that we can start addressing that because we're already in this um, net zero challenge in terms of trying to, to start making change and start to improve the, the way we do things. Kirsten, can I just yes. come in on, on that one? Um, just, just to reply to a little bit of what Anna said. Um, at Coastal Capital, we are working with partners in the area on a um, business case for a pilot for our Home Decarbonisation Academy. Um, we're looking at it um, with um, a view to doing the pilot initially in the Brighton and Hove and Crawley areas, working with their local authorities, looking at their um, social and council housing stock um, for retrofitting. We're working with Brighton University and um, Sus uh, University of Sussex, as well as GB Met and uh, Chichester College Group on this. Um, we are in the process of uh, crunching lots of data around existing housing stock and what types of decarbonisation um, can be done with that in the area and also then kind of like filtering it down into the workforce needs and then the skills needs. Um, we're hoping to have something in the next couple of months that will be 
fit for publishing and um, sharing with all of our partners. So obviously we're very happy to keep you updated on all of that as well. Thank, Thank you. you Claire. Yeah, I, I, I was just going to add that um, you are absolutely right. And I think that's how we we talked about the construction industry. I mentioned doing the same thing for such a long time. It's not kind of usual for house builders to have research and development to bring in new technology to do new things. Um, and coming from an automotive background, research and development is huge. So it's quite different in this sector. And I think that is now changing. Um, and I think some of the initiatives I know that we've kicked off and we've started within our business are exactly all the things you've mentioned, Anna. So yeah, the waste, the using new products, using new way methods of, uh, of doing things, um, because actually we need to consider as well what uh, what resource we're going to have day to day on a site and and where those individuals are going to come from but also how that then impacts with modern methods of construction if we're using manufacturing what does that mean to to the workforce that's then required um to build those homes or, or, or facilities and thank I, and you I think, Leanne. i'm sorry think, Tim. yeah i was going to say uh, adding adding to that and we, we often think about it as described as the, the construction methodology and the way that, that we build, but it's also the way we design that is absolutely key uh, to, to look at that. What uh, are we looking at in terms of material and concrete, for example, has a massive amount of embedded carbon in it uh, and, and we just bury concrete. Uh, how can we reuse it, for example, and that, that, that reuse of the material to, uh, to, to look at uh, not just net zero, but uh, but zero carbon as well. It, there's a lot of, uh, of focus on that. Um, and the way that we design, as I say, design for manufacture, I mean, that, that's John Egan brought that in, uh, uh, thinking in uh, nearly 20 years ago. Um, and uh, same time that Google started, and we only hear about Google nowadays, not so much the uh, design for manufacture, but it is key, absolutely key to get rid of waste. There's so much waste, you know, the, the uh, Things like plasterboard, you know, cutting the top of a uh, half a half a meter of the top of a plasterboard. Why didn't it get designed so that it could be taken the whole length of the plasterboard? Uh, timber uh, use of efficiency has got great uh, uh, usage uh, over and above just sitting in a, in a roof structure, for example. You know, there's lots of things we can do, and I think, and it's getting people together to be able to share these ideas, share these thoughts, and in the area begin to see how we can upskill not just the exist uh, well not not new, just the new people coming into the industry but the existing uh people within the industry so that we can be more efficient uh, that we can be much more sustainable in the way that we build and construct um the living places of the future can i just come back on on that if that's Sorry, okay yeah. and in, in, and can i just pause you for one second anna and in a minute, so we're, it's brilliant that we're hearing the employer perspective and it really sets the context. And, and I think I'm going to come to Ian briefly when we finish, but I want to put the question then to the to the providers, to the supply side in the room and ask. So hearing what's been said, what does that mean for them? What are the challenges that that creates for them and what, how, you know, what, what do they need? from us, from the Skills for the Board, from the employers to help make that happen. So, Anna. I was just going to say that there are um, opportunities to link up with other companies that are already looking at alternative methods, such as um, we work with Helsham Roadways Construction and they're already using alternative methods for um, instead of asphalt and concrete and working for construction companies. So I think the beauty of this forum is also to be able to link up with other companies and, and share best practice. Yeah. Really, really important. Ian, you've been waiting very patiently. Uh, you introduce right. yourself as well, right. please. Hi, uh, I'm Ian, I'm from Chichester College, um, one of the colleges within the group, and um, I'm the head of learning for construction, so have an influence on some of this going forward with education and stuff, and it's really important for me to develop that education as well where the industry is going. Um, picking up on Vicky's point about town, town planners, I've got about 30, 40 of them from across the country on level three, moving to level four, coming from 
um, local authorities, everything's done online for them at the moment as well. So that's working really well with them. So that's a way forward. But um, again, yeah, getting some input from some other companies that actually need those skill sets. Um, also, um, when it comes to that design, surveying, planning, I'm running a T level which has 30 learners on it as of September. I've got 16 already there looking for industry placements. So again, it's I need to get into getting into some of these companies and actually showing you a workforce that we're creating and actually getting them ready for you. Um, they're ready when they come to the end of it to say, I've got my level three, I've got UCAS points, I'm ready to go on to a degree apprenticeship. You know, where are the jobs? And, and we're really, really struggling to get that placement with companies to develop that skill set through that T level. Um, and then on that T level as well, I've got building services on site again, starting next year, another 100 learners, 300 hours a piece industry placement. Again, it's developing that workforce and we can you can try before you buy at the end of the day with those learners and getting them into a degree apprenticeship or taking them off that program and taking them into your companies to actually develop them. But then also going on to the vision for the future that actually I've got to put together a vision 2030 for my curriculum. So it's really, really important for me to understand where you guys are going. We're using BIM in our T levels. We're looking at different things like that. We've got some phenomenal kit that we've been able to get through T level funding that actually is showing the learners this is different. We want to link up with our digital counterparts in the college to say, well, come and do construction. Don't just create games, come and actually do something in construction that's um, 360, that AI, and now we, we talk about MR. Is it MR? No. Yeah, MR, so it's that merged reality. And I talk about that with all the new students coming through. You know, you're on your game, but you're right in your ear listening to stuff. So I want to hear all of that stuff that you guys want so that I can develop a curriculum that supports your needs and moves the industry forward. So, you know, I'm really grateful to be involved in this at the moment. And uh, hopefully uh, we can develop something that's great for our learners, great for the industry moving forward. Thank you, Ian. How, how do you... How do you engage with employers at the moment and, um, um, and what would you hope, what, what would you wish for? What would I wish for? <laughs> I'd wish for all my learners to be able to get 300 hours industry placement on a regular basis. <laughs> but I know that's really tough for companies. You know, the bigger the company, the better it is. We can dip in quite easily. But then we've got a lot of small companies around here where it's a real struggle for them because they don't have the time to be with that person, etc. Um, the, the ideal is that or we have industry placement officers in the college that are meant are going out and looking at companies and asking them, we've got these students, you know, maybe we're going about it the wrong way. Maybe we need to develop some other strategy to take that forward to actually engage with companies a bit better you know tell me what what you need us to do as a company and we'll try to meet with that or you know do you want events in the college or anything where you can come in see people talk about stuff and see what we're doing as well and then have that discussion that uh, we both benefit from at the end of the day Thanks, Ian. And I'm, I'm certain that's probably a challenge faced by all of the providers sitting around this table. Vicky's uh, smiling wryly. Um, Anna's just put something really interesting in the chat around um, a business that uses virtual reality to map out construction sites, which I think is really interesting. Um, and and it, it's just made me think, you know, that is a huge challenge that you've just set out, Ian, and that's just in construction. You know, if we're if we're asking for that, across the range of T levels and as they increase over the years, um, you know, we're also asking in terms of apprenticeships and, and, and kickstart and, and many other things. So how does technology come in to support us on this? Is that, you know, where should our thinking be on that? Um, and, 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 and I think that's definitely something that I think I'd like to 
put down as a marker um, uh, mm. as a way forward. Um, Vicky, did you want to come back in? Yeah, just just really following uh, following up on that comment, um, and I, I I guess at the at the risk of this sounding a bit like a kind of sales pitch, I, I think there is a really good opportunity for us all to be much more joined up here at, at growing our own young people into the professionals that we need in in the West Sussex and coast to capital area, uh, and keeping them local and training them. We know quantity surveyors, for example, are so, so hard to find that it's a real, real big kind of demand. It is great. They're coming up through those T levels, uh, looking at the, the surveying and planning pathway there. It's, it's another real incentive for people as employers to get involved in offering that industry experience, you know, that they haven't necessarily come forward in the, the way that they might. Perhaps if, if for our employers, what you are able to think about this as a great way to trial somebody, use that as an opportunity. If you think this is a really great person, if you think this is a good person, you can take them on at the end of it and sponsor them straight onto the quantity surveying degree apprenticeship and, and you've got them. Um, and it's a good recruitment tactic, surely, to, to begin to employ those young people and to find the best of the best that otherwise might go out of the area and go somewhere else. So we do have those routes and pathways in the coast to capital across our, our, our university and college training providers. And we've got the skills gaps in, in our employers. For some reason, we're just not joining up the dots so that it's working effectively. And I, I don't know how, how coast to capital might be able to help there, but it feels like there's something that needs to happen because, you know, we're running a civil engineering degree and we've got we have sort of six six apprentices this year. So and yet there's a real gap. So that something's not working somewhere. Indeed. Thank you, Vicky. Um, and it is, it, you know, it's a tough nut to crack. And I've, you know, I've been in 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 conversations. This isn't a new conversation. I've been in, in many conversations. Um, and I think I think you know part of the problem is 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 consistency and 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 making sure that we continue the conversation and and I think by by broadening you know at the moment government set a challenge to employer rep representative groups such as as Chamber of Commerce and Anna um, mentioned the local skills improvement um, plan proposal that they've put into government um, and I think it's just really important that we all just keep having this conversation together and that we're not sort of splitting off and and and, I, and i'm just really keen it, for me it's really important that tim and leanne are here today um and as representing businesses as well but i i think just to hear some of the frustrations and the challenges and and, and my challenge to to my board members is going to be to go away and okay so what what difference can we make? I'm not promising to to solve all of these challenges for you. You know, it's a it's a collective problem, and this is about you hearing what's being said today and thinking about that, and reflecting on it. But it's we will go away. Our pledge to you will be that we will go away and think about what we can do and how do we call upon our networks and contacts. Um, and I think the research piece that we're doing in terms of that 10 year planning across the area will be really significant because a part of that is um, engagement with the, um, with the with the employers and with the infrastructure providers, basically, you know, with the with Highways England, with Network Rail, with Gatwick Airport, with um, Power Net, UK Power Networks, whoever it would be with Southern Water. OK, what are you doing? And, and we've got all the data come through those conversations. Let's now, for me, part of that is providing bespoke conversations between yourselves and those providers so that we can build the relationships and, and, and cement that in so that you have got those bigger places to go that you were talking about, Ian, when you need a chunk of, of work placements, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's my hope. Tim and Leanne, did you want to come back on anything that we've heard in the, in the most recent conversation? Um, I, I mean, I was going to say, I think business as well, and I'm coming for a business point of view, but I think business needs to plan a bit better as well. Um, it's no good as a business us saying, 
well, we want planners with three to four years experience um, and we can't find any, if we're not supporting people coming up and actually what do we need in five years time or four years time? And actually sh we need to think about that now so that we can grow people internally. In my last business, we recruited 30 to 40 graduates a year. Um, and I remember one year we had a, uh, the, the sector is really struggling and that year we only recruited, I think it was eight to 10 graduates. Four years down the line, we had a huge problem. We had a massive recruitment issue because we didn't have those experienced people in the business and the only, we couldn't recruit them because they, we just weren't able to find them in this part of the country. So actually, even if the business wasn't doing as well as it, as we'd have liked, we had to continue with those 40 odd graduates every year because it caused a problem later down the line. And I think that's where sometimes business can be quite reactive and quite on the spot and how many, what, who do we need and what experience do they need? But actually we need to work with you guys a bit closer, but also to plan ourselves a bit better for what do we need for the future. And I, uh, just to build on, on that and, and Vicky to, to put it, perspective in as well. I think particularly from the consultancy side uh, that we have traditionally looked in the last 10, 15, maybe 20 years at grad, uh, graduate recruitment, so degree recruitment, um, and to be able to see now the uh, maturity of the courses, the, the content that's coming through for apprenticeships, uh, I think industry needs to understand that better uh, yes. so that we can, yeah. can, see, can see that. I mean, that for me is key. We traditionally take on about 50 um, graduates under normal circumstances and we go to the universities to look at that. The last five years we've been looking more at the apprenticeship side and um, I've spent time with our apprentice, uh, apprentices and asked them why did you go through that route as opposed to go and do a degree and, and the answer came back was I want to work and I, I want to get engaged now um, and, and also I get paid for it um, and you know, and, and I don't think the industry is it recognizing and understanding that enough. And I think we definitely need uh, to create a sort of an ecosystem of communication so that we can get that knowledge out there. Um, and you know, I'm very passionate about that because, well, I started uh, an ONC in building studies at Chichesterian uh, back in the, <laughs> back in the day. Um, and you know, that sort of what they release and learning it, it is it is phenomenal. I, I don't think industry really understands that and that's where we can make a difference is creating communication uh, and, and knowledge sharing around that. I think that's brilliant. If, if I could just say, I mean, that's one of the things that perhaps we all need to change our mindset around because if you, if you, for example, have a quantity surveyor degree apprentice going through, then at the end of five years, you'll have a qualified quantity surveyor with five years of experience. And that's not something that you're getting if you're if you're waiting for them to come out at the end of the degree so it, yeah. it does challenge traditional thinking i think a little bit um yeah. but this person kind of gets to where you need them to be in the long run faster yeah and i, and I think the industry industry needs people to tell them the advantages of of that because they don't see it they don't know it's not, it's the 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 the, the, the the apprentices themselves can't easily tell that story unless they've got support uh, and industry behind them and the colleges as, as well. And if we can create that ability to show what they can do uh, to, 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 to fellow industry members, and that's what Leanne and I want to do, uh, then I think we'll be able to start to change uh, the mindset around that. Thank you. Um, Terry. My name's Terry Dale. I'm on the uh, business development for construction at Orbital South Colleges. I uh, just want to back up what Tim's saying there a bit. Um, the growth in apprenticeships at the group has grown in the last seven years. In, this is just for construction from 25 to 425. Our applications have gone up, well, two weeks ago we were 70% up on last this time last year. We're nearly 100% up on applications. The point I'm making is my largest growth of apprenticeships are in the higher apprenticeships, surveyors, civil engineers, engineers, building services engineers on that side. And I think the, the 
companies need to recognise is they go down the route of looking for graduates from university conversations and that is another big part of our business we talk to it we talk to industry a lot I spend I'm not an academic I'm they don't allow me to teach thank god um, I'm from the construction industry and the financial services industry which is a strange combination but I've done an apprenticeship as a bricklayer but now I also worked as a contracts manager so I'm looking on the point of view of what industry needs it's quite interesting to listen to you talk about the retrofitting and everything else on there another side of things that I think needs to be looked at is the qualifications that have been the apprenticeships are very good because they are by and whole being drawn up by construction companies and civil engineering companies on that side as Tim's pointed out and making the companies more aware of the benefits on it a lot of things that come back to us from our customers our clients or you know from the, from the sector is they use if they get a graduate who's never worked on a building site or never done anything in anger they find that very hard for them to adjust coming from university straight into industry so the apprenticeship provides that working and knowledge becoming a working surveyor and growing into the role and growing into the company that you're working for mm -hmm. so you know and that that that's part of the ethos by behind what we do what i was going to say is i think sometimes the awarding bodies like city and guilds and pearsons need to look at the qualifications they're putting together because sometimes they just don't fit what's necessary for the industry on that side. But just backing up what Tim said on there, and I think that we do, we do need to talk more and construction companies and civil engineering companies need to listen and take that point of view of what they're going to get. They're going to get more, a better product at the end. If, so sorry, I don't mean to be sort of using people's products, but that's what you're getting. And you're going to get more likely somebody coming through an apprenticeship program working for you are more likely to stay with you you know if you treat them well and they're and they're enjoying themselves and they're, they're staying with you you know nobody wants to run around looking for the extra pound note unless you're a bricklayer but that's all that point so that's the only point i wanted to make but just to back up what tim was saying thank you terry really really useful insight is there is there any any comment or reflections from and there's no pressure to speak but from from anybody that that hasn't who might be waiting for a for a gap in the in the conversation sorry i just want to introduce myself so um i'm lucy mitchell head of learning for construction and engineering across gb Mac. so we've got three sites um, with a huge amount of engineering and construction across two other sites. Um, and so I'm just really keen to get employer engagement to support the learners because what we've been looking at is ensuring that we've got provision that takes everybody through from the lower levels all the way up through to HE. Um, and, and so by doing that, that also brings into um, our, our focus on apprenticeships and, and that is one of the weaker areas that we've got in terms of that employer engagement post COVID in that actually employers need those learners to be on site and, and we need those learners to be in. And it's kind of just making sure that that having a, a, an area to be able to communicate um, with employers in a really positive way so that we're helping each other out, whether it's engagement or whether it's um, sort of future planning for curriculum or whether it's actually just to support the development of our own delivery and just get those industry talks um, to, to really engage the learners into what they're going to be doing in the future. So um, I'm just really pleased that this forum is, is existing and that um, I want to be part of it. So thank you. Kirsten, can I just add um, thinking about that? Or oh, Kirsten frozen? I'll carry on. Um, Lucy, great, well, it was great Lucy point. that had frozen, it was me, sorry. <laughs> great point, uh, Lucy, on that, and particularly uh, something that Leanne and I are you keen know, on. We, we also support schools in going in and doing careers talks. Um, for me, it's, it's also about getting the young uh, engineers and surveyors to come along as well and play a part because, yeah, they'll see someone with, with grey hair and 40 years in the industry, but actually, uh, they, they also like to hear from those that have just entered the industry very much so uh, and and we can help with that 
uh, as well because we, we you know particularly in, uh, as also the virtual world we're talking uh, now as well to be able to get uh, our, our graduates and, and young surveyors and engineers to talk and they've got great passion when they talk as well um, so we can definitely mix that up there's still a bit of the, the old heads as well but uh, yeah I think those those talks would would really really help yeah, did you just want to reference how we're um, taking this construction spotlight through the work of the Enterprise Advisor Network what we've got planned in terms of the careers events yeah um, in the summer we've got um, a it's called V Fair. It's um, a virtual careers fair, um, and that's um, it's being held on one live day in our careers hub area, which is um, across that kind of Crawley Gatwick going up into East Surrey area. However, it's also going to be available as a platform for a month um, during um, June, early July. And basically, it's it's a bit like a, a normal careers fair. Um, there are um, a virtual hall with lots of organisations, um, and that includes construction organisations, all sorts of organisations, but also um, training providers as well. Um, it's going to be open to secondary schools, um, kind of like year 10s, year 11, 12. Um, we've also got an auditorium um, as part of the day as well, where there will be a series of videos um, and during that day you can ask online questions um, of the people presenting and that will include construction um, and we're also going to be having some bits around young people um, that are have done apprenticeships will be talking um, and there's just going to be lots of information which will include um, a lot of information around the construction sector as well. I can so, ensure that people get that link if, if you don't mind me sharing your contact details with our project manager on this. Yeah. I Marcus, think, we'll I think for that. me, just reinforcing, I missed um, some of what Lucy said because, because she, because I froze, not Lucy didn't freeze. Um, but I think it's something, you know, for these construction spotlights, I want to make sure that that is is going down through our enterprise advisor network, which which we um, which we're really pleased to to lead, um, and through the careers hub, which is a part of that enterprise advisor network. So that basically, if you don't, if you're not aware, it's we we recruit business volunteers to work with individual schools or colleges across the coastal capital area, and it's supporting them to 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 make sure that they're. Uh, and getting opportunities for their students to engage in the world of work and to get work placements. So mm -hmm. for me, I want to take construction is our first spotlight and I want to make sure that we're driving that through the schools and through the colleges and um, Tim and Leanne being particularly passionate about this. It's fantastic. So, so, you know, for me, I think that's a key, it's a key place to start as well as all of the other things that we've, that we've talked about this afternoon. Um, I think I'd just like to take us as we, as we, made a particular effort to have an inclusion moment at the beginning. Um, I think I'd like us to just have a little focus on equality, diversity and inclusion and think about what we might be doing around that, what the challenges might be, um, because I know Tim particularly, um, you know, and, and Leanne actually, both of you are really, really keen on this and, and just some thinking from people around what they might already be doing or what their challenges might be. Leanne, do you want to come in? Uh, yeah, I was, I was going to say, um, so we've got quite um, a, a good ratio. So we've got about 40% women in our organisation. We've got female site managers. Um, so we, we've done quite a bit of work. What I would say is uh, quite a few of the women we've recruited, I've had to convince <laughs> to consider the construction industry. Um, and actually it's only been through conversations with them um, that they've decided to consider, I don't know, being a site manager, for example, and developing within the business. Um, we haven't necessarily had a huge amount of applications, 
um, and candidates coming through if we advertise a role for a site manager, for example, but where we have managed to have a conversation with somebody who we believe has got trans the transferable skills, the conversations I often have with people and they often kind of say to me, oh, I've never considered that before, never thought about it. And then we have a bit more of a conversation and then they're happy to kind of consider it. And actually they've been really, really successful. Um, and I, personally, I thought it's quite frustrating <laughs> because I want <laughs> people to understand more about the sector and the industry. And that, because actually when people come into it, they thrive and they really enjoy it and they, they get on really well. And uh, for me, Kirsten, I think, uh, you know, getting, uh, as, as Leanna said, if we can get attracted uh, all backgrounds, cultures, uh, and that gender balance into the uh, into the industry um, that helps. But we need to do a lot of work as well as an industry to make sure that when they come in and join, that they can thrive, they can um, be themselves when they come to work. And, and uh, well, I just can congratulate Leanne uh, and, and thank them for winning a you know the the awards that have, have come out recently, the best companies or both. Um, uh, Thakum and, and Arcadis did well, but it takes a lot of time and effort uh, mm. to, to get there and commitment uh, at a leadership level within organisations to make sure that you create that inclusive environment where people do get that sense of belonging, which is which is so important uh, to create that and uh, and to be able to promote uh, what what you're doing. But it's to what audience, and I think that's an area where we need to think about. Uh, we go through the traditional uh, routes of um, you know, construction, news, uh, buildings, um, LinkedIn, etc. But are we reaching the right people through those routes? Are there other routes that we need to look mm -hmm. at to, to, to get uh, recruitment into the industry and show what we can we can we can do? And that uh, everyone on a on a building site or in an office can can thrive and be part of it without feel, feeling any prejudice coming in. Uh, to them. Uh, traditionally, the industry has not been great at mm. that, but we are seeing we are seeing big change now, uh, and that's important. And I think that's what the feedback I got when I first came into the industry was it's a different place now to what it was 10 years ago, for example. It's mm. a very different place. Um, and I know, Anna, you mentioned about uh, mental health and that being a struggle in construction. And yeah, we've done a huge amount of getting people talking. And, and now I get we've got a lot of mental health first aiders and I get a lot of phone calls from people and often going off onto site. And it's it's brilliant the way we've now got people talking and having conversations and actually flagging when they're struggling with things, which all in, helps with that sort of inclusive um, and, and making sure everybody feels part of belonging to the organisation and that we care about them, them and their, their health. And, and, and and training... Sorry, Tim, you go. I said the, the, the training, is, is which, you know, particularly that the mental health training, but the training of people around behaviours on, on sites and understanding mm -hmm. how different cultures work. I mean, we've, we've just um, been through, uh, colleagues have, have been through Ramadan, uh, fasting for long hours during a day, uh, not being able to take water, uh, even by, by, by you know by mouth during that the daylight hours, and making sure that colleagues around uh, our, our, our Muslim friends and colleagues have got the support they need um, during those those long days, and to understand what Ramadan is about, and that means that people can feel comfortable when they come to work about being themselves and being accepted for for for, the, for their culture and who they are. Um, and the more we can do that, um, the, 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 the better we'll get. Thanks, Tim. Ian? I uh, just want to add to that, the, you know, my team here in Chichester, we're about a 30-70 split. So that's really nice now. And it's really nice to see the diversity that that brings as well to some of our students. Um, and also our students coming through now, we are, there is a growing sort of like female sort of like predominance within the workforce here but also with our students as well so you know that's gradually moving forward and just to share something as well about the fact of how some of those barriers are breaking down one of our learners stood up in front of his class and explained about the fact that he wanted to be known as someone else and to be non-binary 
and that again shows the learners are coming through having that confidence to say things and i think there's a there's a long way for us to go in the industry um, there are a lot of companies that are still in a certain mindset but we can see the youngsters coming through and they're feeling confident about who they are we're embracing that and now we really like to work with companies and sort of like see what companies are doing so that we can develop that further as well for ourselves brilliant thank you really really insightful there so we've we've, we've heard a lot today um and I think there are lots of opportunities for us as a skills board to to reflect and to to consider where we might put a focus. Um, for me, I think equality, diversity, and inclusion I think is is a really key one for us. Um, certainly, thinking about the skills of the future um, and. And how do we facilitate some of those conversations with with businesses for you? And um, you know, I know there are lots of, of concerns around that in terms of in terms of equipment, in terms of teaching, in terms of um, you know all of those things, funding that you you will automatically jump to. Unfortunately, I, I can't solve all of those for you. Um, but I know those are all in the round coming through in the, 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 the skills improvement plan and thinking that, that Anna's put forward along with there's a strategic development fund um, uh, proposal as well, which, which is, is, is going to be looking at some of those things. So I think it's just about making sure that, that, that Tim and Leanne um, and, 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 and we think about what can we bring through into this. So I think some conversation, Tim, I know you've, you've, You've got some thinking around some people that 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 we might have interesting discussions with around skills of the future, um, and and I'm I'm interested to see how we can we can rally rally some employers through your networks to think about you know how we get employers to buy into um, the town planner challenge for example you know we might just want to pick on one specific thing um, we might want to consider how we support you with industry placements, what can the, the skills board do, but also what can Costa Capital do? Um, what can the growth hub do that engages with, with businesses on a daily basis? Is there a way that we can support you? Um, and, and certainly focusing in on, on having that spotlight focus for the Enterprise Advisor Network. Tim and Leanne, did you want to, to offer any reflections and thinking about what you might want to focus on? from this conversation? Um, I was going to say, I think um, the the conversations, the being joined up, the understanding more of, from from you guys as providers about what you're offering. And, and I think for that, for me personally, in our organisation, that will help hugely uh, so that we've got a better understanding that I can sell that in the business. But then I'm thinking about what other organisations and networks that we've got, that we've got access to, that we, we can share that information with who are all the contractors we're working with. Where, where can we we share that um, and make the most of it? But I think that's yeah, that it's been really interesting, and I've um, I've learned quite a bit from that. Um, and hopefully, yeah, it, by working together, we can find some solutions and some yeah, some ways forward that will help as those gaps as we talked about earlier and help to to resolve some of those issues. Just from Kirsten, from uh, my reflections, similar to Leanne, uh, collaboration and network, I think, are the two words that I probably best described how I think we could get moving forward. Uh, and, and it's been great to hear um, the uh, passion uh, and and just to also get the knowledge of, of, of what is uh, apprenticeship uh, and, uh, and, and skills training that we've got. Uh, in the coast capital area um, and how just to connect to be able to connect that and join it up with with employers as you highlighted Kirsten that that we that we know uh, could could well be interested um, that for me I think would be a, a, a massive connection uh, to, to make and to take us forward. Thank you Tim. So just in terms of, of next steps we as in Skills360 board members and I'd like to include Anna um, very much in that 
um, will go away and reflect on what we've heard today and come up with a, you know, I'd like to pick two or three things where we think we can we can add value and, and focus in on those. And, and we'll come back to you with a follow up um, from today. The, uh, another next step for us will actually be, I think, um, to bring together a, a grouping of employers um, to actually feed some of this thinking into them. So that 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 will be like we've had today. So I, I don't plan to um, start um, to, to, to mix that up and to bring the providers and employers just yet. I want us with our skills um, construction champions to have a conversation with those employers and, and do a very similar conversation. We've got our um, research piece that's coming through. Claire, when's that due to um, finalise? It's the first couple of weeks in July we will get the final report through. So the intention then is for us to get our heads around that and then to um, plan a way forward to, to, to share that with you in the most useful way possible and to facilitate conversations with those, with those key employers through that. Um, and to keep this conversation going. So, as I said, I don't want to try and boil the ocean. I want to pick on two or three things that we really think that we can help you with. And please don't stop doing everything that you're doing in the meantime, um, because, you know, you are doing really, really good work. And I'm not suggesting that we're going to do, you know, we're going to suddenly jump in and do any of that. It's about trying to make life a bit easier for you or, you know, to help out in some way or to solve a particular problem um so thank you very very much and i do hope today has been useful thank you for coming along um and if you want to follow up please please do follow up with claire um and with any questions or if, if 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 you're all happy um perhaps just let us know if you're not if if someone wants to to to, to be introduced sort of via the via the group then then please let us know um but thank you once again and have an enjoyable rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, all.